Hello, hello and good afternoon. Welcome to Jack's Bane Studio Live number nine, streaming three times a week on Twitch. Today, what we have today. So we started this week um, with the, uh, finally with the boat game, with the sailing game. And if you remember from last time we had the boat and something that looked like the sea and the boat was falling and it was falling through the sea. So what we have today, um, after a couple of days of work, is a little bit better. So we have uh, um, the boat actually floating. I'm not super happy yet about the way it's, uh, it's floating. It still um, takes a long time to find peace and to find a stable position um, sometimes it becomes unstable unstable and it will explode but you know i think it's good enough uh, for me to work on it right now it's moving forward because i just applied uh, uh, a force moving forward um, to test and see uh, how much drag it will get and it's actually moving forward and slightly turning on the right so Interesting. We also can see the, the forces applied by the water to the hull working and the center of gravity there. So um, the idea for today is to um, get a little bit of both data configuration. Um, Right now, there are things that I have to put in code, uh, both on the physics side and on the graphic side. So I want to implement just a simple file for now, where we will put things like uh, CG location and, and, and things like zero. Right. And that, that's all for now. And uh, this, this will become way more complex with time just to give you an idea of how this thing is going to look like uh, this is what i had for the planes for the flight simulator so i had something for the physics that looked like this all right so as we adding as we're going to add wings and rudders and foils to this you know, this is how it's going to happen. So for now, let's start with this simple thing here. All right, okay, so now this should run exactly like before. Yep, okay. CG is right there, which is cool. Also, I, I found a bug in the shadows, so shadows today are looking a little bit better. I adjusted a little bit the bias, so a little bit better. Also, Chuck's fixed. There was a hole in the in the boat um, under this. There was no triangle, so the the shadow. I, I was not getting this shadow here. Now it works fine. Looks good. I still have a bug where sometimes there is a yeah. Maybe you can see. <laughs> There is a like some weird, yeah, some weird thing ha happening over there. No idea what it is. It's the Kraken or something like that. I don't know what it is. Anyway, this is working fine. So in theory now, I should be able to move that CG around. Now, the funny thing is that, OK. So if I want to move it back, in theory, this is minus, right? Is it? Let's check. Nope. <laughs> All right. I, I, I will never, I will never be able to understand the signs in 3D graph. All right, okay, so this is now moved back. It's cool because we have the back of the boat sitting a little bit somehow lower and we can see the the horns I call it the horns maybe it's not really the horns. the horns are coming out of the water right now 
which is a result of the CG moving back. So it's it's doing what we expect. Let's try to, to do it a little bit more, let's see. A little bit more extreme, four meters at the back. Let's see if, <laughs> let's go, let's go. Let's see if we can make it completely broken. Weigh it down. But this looks, uh, this looks okay. Just for fun, let me see what happens if I move the CG on the side. Hey, Jason, how are you? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh shit! I, did you see that? <coughs> did you see the mast floating? That's cool, no? That was a bit surprising, actually, because... Well, four meters, like... Yeah, four meters is basically... Yeah, yeah, it's completely out, so it makes sense. It makes sense. Let's try to reduce it a little bit. But it was cool, it was cool, it was not expected at all. And actually, today we were doing the, the collider, and my first idea was like, okay, you know, I told Chuck, just do me the, the collider for the the low poly collider. I will show you the low poly collider for the water. I wanted just to do the the, the two holes. And then I said, you know what, you know, this, this boat is going to capsize eventually. People are going to capsize. So do on also the mast and it's it's amazing and it actually worked and now now we can see that with the cg on this side we have yeah we have this the the boat in the water here and slightly slightly out of the water here you can see a little bit of the rudder no dumping now there is there is if actually if i turn the dumping off it will go on forever. So if I turn, where was that code? Right, if I turn this drag pressure, so let's say for example that I want to see only with the buoyancy forces, it will basically bounce forever. Let's see. Yeah. In theory, it will do. It will do this dance forever. Stefano, more general question from me regarding work methodology. I hope it's not too heavy. <laughs> How much time you spend pre-planning architecture of your project parts, or maybe you rely more on prototype re refactor agile cycle and try not to pre-plan that much. Just go after what's needed at the time, and use your experience. Just. Yes, uh, definitely the second the second uh, thing. I, I do spend um, time thinking about uh, how things like like engine uh, architecture works, but that's also uh, a back and forth thing where where I I implement it, then I try to use it and and realize oh maybe it would be better in a different way. Uh, when I'm in this kind of stage, I have a, a sort of idea of what I want to do. But when it comes to the implementation is, it's pretty much as you see, I just go for what looks obvious and sometimes it's completely wrong. <laughs> um, sometimes it's weird for me. See, see this, this thing I don't understand. I don't understand why Rust is doing this to me. Why he thinks he needs to borrow gay if I'm doing clone? If I'm doing clone, cannot borrow game direct input as immutable because it's also borrow as mutable. Hmm. Ah, of course, that's why. Ah, see, he's, he's right. 
is right because it's borrowed here when I do get renderer mutable. Okay, that makes sense. I'm happy with that. So how I solve this? All right. So this monstrosity. So some. So the functional people are telling me that this thing makes more sense than for loop. All right. Charles Leclerc is playing my game right now live on Twitch. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you very much, MVK, for telling me. I'm not really I'm not really worried about performance that much. I'm wondering if this thing is more readable than this thing. So for the Stefano three years from now, which one will make more sense? Well, for the time being, let's let's try to be modern. Let's try to be like the cool guys. Let's try to be functional. There you go, look at that. I'm so modern. move on all right say so how we do this all right so there is already something we strange where rotating the boat doesn't rotate Okay, so rotating the boat is not changing the angle of attacks. So, apparent wind. Get the velocity. Awesome. All right, I think it's a good time to try the Visual Studio Code debugger. That's it. Okay, so. Let me put it at what I think should be an angle. So, something that makes sense. Okay, we definitely should see an angle now. So, bang, stop there. Okay, so. so wind is coming through. And the apparent wind in world space is this, which is fine. So words to local Where is LV? Where is LV? Haha <laughs> Visual Studio immediately fucked me. Can I see V2 at least? Okay, so V2 is that. Okay, it is LV. Right. Okay. So that it's okay. I know what I know. What is the problem? The problem is that the wind, is, the the sail is not rotated. Right. So the sail should have the up vector into one direction. Right. So so when I do the sail, I should do from translation and then. And then so and we should get it. Let's see if something happens now. So turn the boat. Okay, I see an angle of attack. That is something that I don't understand exactly what it is. <laughs> 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 
Goodbye, both. No, I still don't see... I still don't see any force coming from the sail. Ah, it is. I see something here, but it's totally wrong. What the fuck is this? What the hell is that? What is that supposed to be? 90 degrees. So what we are missing is right now the, the, the sail is completely in line. Right, it's completely in line with the boat. So there is no way for us to create a forward movement. So the thing that we need is to be able to rotate that wing. Is it? Still going pretty much at 90 degrees, so it looks like it didn't do it. Should we rotate it before doing that? All right, so this definitely, there you go, there you go. So this definitely has a component in front now. In fact, we're sailing forward. We're sailing, bitches. <laughs> okay, I, th I think what is, what I need to do tomorrow is basically add well, first of all I need debug I need I need to see I need to see my sail rotation I need to see my sail angle of attack and I need to be able to change to rotate my sail to make it work But we are basically sailing. Yeah, still super primitive as a system. We have a we have a wing that has a, a ridiculous ridiculous physics, but the power of the wind. And it's cool that the all the buoyancy and the dragging the, the, the water viscous stuff just keeps the boat pretty much straight. So it just went there, it's put, you know, the back to the, it tends to rotate into the wind and, and go. It's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Good. Well, guys, thank you very much for spending these hours with me. And um, if you see this on YouTube or whatever, you know, you can join me on Twitch. Uh, you can follow, you can subscribe, you can share on social media, follow me on YouTube and so on. And I will see you Friday morning at 10 o'clock and hopefully this thing will sail a little bit more like a sailboat. See you next time. Ciao.